Today's video is going to be all about powders. Welcome to a grandmother's freshly baked tray of cookies. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use pigment powders to create effects on some of my models. Here you can see an example of pigment powders on the feet and around the base of this model. It gives like a dusty appearance and makes it look a lot more weathered and worn in and a little bit more realistic. Here is another model that has the same effect applied to the base and to the feet. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I apply those effects to these models. I have two models which I'm going to show you this on. One being this already painted and 3D printed Space Marine. Usually this is the step that happens towards the end of your painting. So once after you've done most of the detail and fine details and things that make the model look like the model, this is the kind of weathering that you would do right at the end of that process. Because this is the final layer and you might want to seal this in. And you're going to have to seal this in and do it again and seal it in and do it again because sometimes the pigments don't stick as well. Because these pigments aren't in a carrier, this makes these pigments not have any way of sticking to your model. So what we want to do is try to seal them in. In certain aspects you can and in some areas you can't. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. But this process, you don't want to be using your favorite brush because it is going to get into your brush and probably ruin it. And for this particular model, I'm going to use Burnt Rust Red from AK Interactive. Pigment powders are not like normal paints. However, they are made up of one of the same components that is in your standard paint. This is the paint. This is the pigment that would be mixed into a medium, which would then make up your paint that you use to paint your models. This is the raw form of that paint. The way that I'm going to use this for this specific model is by taking a small amount of it on the end of my brush and very carefully I'm going to place this into the areas where I want there to be dust on his feet. It is going to put a lot more down than what you would expect but you'll see we'll have to blow off some because it doesn't all stick as perfect as you would expect it to stick. So as you can see a lot of it's falling off whilst I'm working with it and I want to try and place some of that into the rest of the base as well because that would obviously sell the effect that this dust is more all over the base. And as you can see there is a fair amount of it everywhere. So we're going to tap it off. And then I give it a gentle blow. And that's what you're left with after doing it just one layer of this. This however will come off unfortunately. So if you have to rub it it will come off. So the best thing to do now is to seal that in with a layer of clear coat. Unfortunately, once you seal that in, it is going to dull the coat quite a bit and some of that dustiness is going to disappear. But you can add a little bit more over the top. And I also tend to add a little bit of it over a slightly wetter coat of clear, just because it helps stick to the paint that is already in the clear coat itself. On this model, it's not very easy to see, but I have already added some of this on the feet of this model. I'm going to just be adding a little bit more to make it a little bit more predominant. And as you can see, it creates just an extra layer of detail that you probably wouldn't be able to create by painting that only on its own. Um, you can experiment with different ways of doing this. You can also use it a lot more wet. So here's another example. I'm now going to use a slightly wetter brush this time. And this, this will create a little bit more of a muddy kind of effect. So again, it all depends on, you know, what you want to get out of your weathering effect. But once this dries, it will dry off um dry and still have that powdery kind of look to it but it will be a lot more thicker and muddier than what it was when it was drier and obviously with his cape walking across the floor it probably picked up a bit of mud during the fights that this man was going through And that's an easy way for you to add some textures to the bottom of your models, to add a little bit more life into those models, even if you don't have to use too much skill to do something as simple as this. So when it comes to pigment powders, there is multiple different brands you can use. You can even make some of your own pigment powders. Some of the ones that I use is the AK Interactive, as well as the Ammo by MIG. 
I find most of the pigment powders that you can buy from the hobby shop generally tend to do an extremely great job at what they're supposed to do, which is be pigment powders. They're great for weathering, they do rub off unfortunately, but gives an excellent look especially for your first photos. But unfortunately if it's the kind of piece that you're going to use to play with, you're probably going to rub them off. If you're just going to display the piece, then it should be fine for many years to come. I did mention in the video that you can make some of your own pigment powders and you just use chalk pastels, which you can then crush, which I find gives too large of a granule. You can also use a very coarse sandpaper and file down these chalks and you have any color of weathering powder, which you would like to have is in your discretion right here inside of this box. That's another option. Hopefully that that very short video was helpful to you. If you had no idea about pigment powders, now you do. Um, just like I said, they are very cool, simple, easy way of adding a bit more texture and a little bit more life to your models without having too many skill sets to do that. This video was made possible due to a suggestion from one of the Patreons over on Discord. Don't forget I have a Patreon and if you'd like to join the Patreon and support this channel and what I'm trying to do, then please have a look in the description below of the description. Also, if you like this kind of content, make sure to click the like, possibly give us a subscribe. YouTube does tell me that only 40% of you guys are not subscribed. So now's the time to click that button. And if you want to see more of these kind of videos in the future and support the channel, don't forget to join the Patreon. And like I say, every single time we get to this part of the video, I have only one thing left to say. Everybody over there, in the background there, they all have the same thing to say. If you don't like it, just click dislike and f off. I have fucking pigment powder over everything now.